Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord, and I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, mm -hmm. alleluia. The Lord be with you. With you A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But after, he changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. And he said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of heaven before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, who are we in the stories? This is not the prodigal son story, but it is one like it. For Jesus, Jesus taught in parables so that he, he didn't indict the people he was talking about straightforward. But after he proposed the parable and they answered, well, then he pointed to who they were. In the same way, Everybody loves the story of the prodigal son coming home. It's like a victory over sin and death and God is rejoiced and right through a big party. But what about the other son? The son that was doing the right thing all along. And he's like, why would you waste, you know, the fatted calf on him? And you won't even give me a goat to go party with my friends. And the father is like, you know, so like last week, I, I, is it unfair because God gives the person who comes in at the last minute to heaven in repentance, is it not just for God to give them the full inheritance to give them all of heaven for the same reward? Is it unfair that God has his ways and we say he's unfair? Is it not our ways that we're not willing to give up sin in our lives so we say that God can't judge us? Well, that's going to be really difficult when you find yourself in judgment. Rather, to find ourselves in mercy, the love of God. So the son says, I won't go. But later, he rethinks it. And he does what the father wants. And the father is well pleased. The other son says he's going to go. I had to know it was a lie. And didn't go at all. So should he get rewarded? He's got an unfair if he says, no, you're excluded. I'm just saying these are God's ways. And that one must willingly submit to become a son or daughter. And then we get everything. And this is the story of men and women who journey through life and make really bad decisions. Now, some people, you know, a really bad decision is, I don't know, something extremely minor. For others, much more, much more heinous sin and 
just destruction and, and death. But God doesn't want that for us. No good father would. Jesus didn't come to save the righteous. He came to save sinners. People who recognized their sin and repented of that sin so that his sacrifice might not be in vain. But he didn't do it for just particular people who are the chosen few. He does it for everyone. And you have to choose if you want to be one of those. So our choices are all day, every day. For good or for the ungood, the evil. I mean, we should never tolerate evil. Not in the church, not in our government, not in our friends, not in our family. Bad behavior cannot be tolerated. And if one can't discipline yourself, self-discipline, then you shall receive discipline as you ought. You don't defund the police. They're necessary for people who are lawless and who don't care. Those people need police to save them from the people who can't or won't defend themselves. You know, we can't tolerate sin in the church. We have to call it out for what it is and not tolerate it at all. We have to do that in our government. If it won't comply to godly values and God's guidance, then it should be dismantled and started again in Christ Jesus our Lord. At this point, folks, the only salvation we have is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And heaven forbid that we don't turn away from our sin collectively and personally, lest He has to come in judgment. We don't want that. We want God's mercy, don't we? Don't we want God to forgive our sins, to give us hope, to give us comfort, to give us guidance? Don't we want that? Well, of course we do. And some little children are crying out for discipline. And they might be grown adults, but they never grew up. Those people need discipline and guidance from the outside as any child does. Parents, children fuss, but when they're pitching a fit, you need to discipline that child. And so agrees everybody around you. If you can't control your children in the cereal aisle, then don't go there. No one wants that. But I saw the most beautiful video just yesterday. It's a, it's a room and the mother's all draped and it's probably your husband taking the video. The baby is just screaming and pitching a fit, right? I mean, who wouldn't have gone through that experience? What the heck? And the baby's just crying and crying and crying, screaming. And they bring the baby over all swaddled up with that little cap on its head. The baby's just screaming. And they bring the baby to its mother and the mother begins talking to it. And immediately it stops screaming and sits there in the comfort of the mother's voice. The caption under it just lets us know that we hear our mother's voice in the womb before we are born. And it is a comfort for us always. So indeed, 
We hear God's voice. And we know it. Do we listen to that voice? Or do we listen to the evil one and his lies? It is your choice. Because you have free will. It is necessary for us to choose to love. To love God and each other. To enjoy the blessings that God gives us. And to turn away from all that is not of God. So that we might be not personally righteous. But living a life worthy of being called the children of God. God loves you. He wants you to be happy. That's why he created you. And you have a place with God forever in paradise if you choose to accept.